Hello again, and welcome to this Crazy Talk Animator 2 video tutorial on how to do face puppeteering. So, in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to create a photo face character. Then we did the lip syncing, and I showed you how to do that. So, let me open the timeline here. I have Walter selected, um, and I will expand the timeline. Bring this to the beginning, and let me zoom out a bit. Okay. So if I open the voice clip track, you can see all the lip syncs that we have inside. Okay. So I took the time to clean up the lip, the, the lip syncs and make sure that we have those silences and the none and everything else. Okay. So now we are ready to do a puppeteering to give emotions to this character. So uh, let me play this back. There comes a point in a man's life, and maybe that time for you is now. When it doesn't hurt to start thinking about the future. Okay, so we want to do some puppeteering to this guy. So what we have to do first is we select him, and he's selected, okay? And then we go to the left side toolbar, and we click on Puppet Editor. This will open the body puppet by default, if I remember correctly. So then we just simply need to go up here and switch to Face Puppet. Okay, and this will give us the face puppeteering panel. Now, inside we have different face profiles. We have comic, we have youthful, we have attractive, there is wicked, there is grumpy, there is goofy. Um, and then we have female seven and we have male. Okay, so what's the difference between all of these? Of course, each one has different types of emotions like wicked or grumpy or whatnot. But then the last two, these are designed for photorealistic characters, meaning that if you create a character, a face character, and you create it from a photograph, then you might want to use these profiles here. Okay, This is because uh, a human face w has more subtle animations versus a comic face. So these profiles are designed with that in mind. So let's try something out. For example, I can choose Wicked and let's choose something like Smiley. Make sure the head orientation and head rotation is off. Let me just preview here. Okay. So if you go up. Oh, there's one more thing. L l notice that when I press spacebar, this little cursor appears. Okay. So this is the set point for your mouse movements. So if I go up from that cursor, I'll have that movement. And if I'll go down, I'll have that, you see? And if I go to the right, he's a bit sneaky. OK. So you can play around with this and see what works best for you. So that one was uh, Wicked, right? So let's say we have Grumpy. Let's choose uh, Grumpy Smiley. Make sure that I, I'd like to turn off the head rotation and the head or head head tilting, because if not, then you have the head moving around and we can't really appreciate the effects on the facial muscles. Okay. See that. Okay. So again, if you're controlling a, a photorealistic character like this, you want to do subtle movements. Okay. You don't want those jerky movements inside, because that only works for comic characters. Okay, so if I have this character, um, this photorealistic character, I can choose male. And then inside, you'll see that each profile has additional face controls. We have general, we have smiley, angry, sad, happy, and scared. And notice that each one of them has a hotkey, QWERT, Q-W-E-R-T. So this means that when, when you're recording on the fly, you can switch from these different face controls without having to pause the recording. So for example, if I preview, okay, this is general, down, and then I'll press W. Okay. Thing is, because by default, the face control is also selecting the head orientation. So I just want to show you, okay, that one is smiley, I think. What's the next one? Next one we have here, hold up. So we have smiley, we have angry. Let me turn this off. 
I go up. Okay. So you notice that the movements are very, very subtle compared to the previous wicked one. Let's try another one here. This one, if I believe, was, yes, yeah, sad. So let's turn off the head orientation. And you'll notice the different facial muscles are being selected. Then sad. He's crying there. And if I, if I click on my mouse, you see it, he'll blink. This is because we have the eyelid selected. So I can go left, right, up, and down. Okay, so you can choose um, any one of these facial profiles and then you can choose different face, face controls. Now, what I like to do, if you've watched uh, some of my previous tutorials, I like to do everything from scratch. I don't know. I just like to, have, to be in full control uh, of the animations. So, the cool thing about Crazy Talk is that even if you want to create everything from scratch, Crazy Talk is so intuitive that it's actually very easy to do that. It's very easy to create a base animation and then layer animations on top of that. You just have to make sure that this option is selected. The blend data on next recording is selected. Okay? So, before we start, I'm going to open the timeline once again and I'll show you that we only have a voice clip. Okay? This contains the waveform audio and the lip syncs. So, we're going to create a facial clip that's going to go in here. Okay? So let's let's do this right now. Um, I will reset all clear selection because I don't want to select any facial muscles. So I will also make sure that blend data on next recording is on. This way I can layer my, my animations one at a time. So I know what I want to use. I'm going to choose this facial muscle here which controls the inner eyebrows. Okay, and if I preview, I go up. Okay, that'll control the inner eyebrows. If I go down, what happens? The outer ones. Okay, so I just want to control the inner ones, so I'll just go up. Okay, so make sure the time scrub is uh, to the beginning. You can press stop to make sure. And let's record. Okay, let's try this. There comes a point in a man's life, and maybe that time for you is now, when it doesn't hurt to start thinking about the future. It's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. It's a problem of motivation, all right? Yeah, I just stare at my desk. But it looks like I'm working. And stop. There you go, not bad. So if I open the timeline, let me stop this and go all the way to the beginning. If I open the timeline, you'll see now that we created this puppet clip. Okay? Great. So let me zoom out a bit right there okay so we have the voice clip and we have the puppet clip so we're gonna do this again I'm going going to press stop and I'm going to clear selection and this time around I want to control let's say his cheeks here I want him to smile at the end okay I want to make that little smirk at the end when he says it looks like I'm working so let's record make sure the blend data on next recording is on Okay, and that the time scrub is to the beginning. So, spacebar, here we go. There comes a point in a man's life, and maybe that time for you is now, when it doesn't hurt to start thinking about the future. It's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. It's a problem of motivation, all right? I'll go up. Yeah, here. I just stare at my desk. But it looks like I'm working. And smile. And hold it, and there you go. Not bad. So, we finish with that. So I'll, I'll stop, and if I open the timeline, you'll see that we have the same puppet clip. But this time around, we have layered the inner eyebrows, and we also have layered the, the little smirk at the end. Okay? Uh, what else can we do? Well, let's play around. Um, I would like to move his eyes a bit, because you, you notice that when people talk, humans talk, you're moving your eyes, and you're probably twitching a bit, or you're scanning the environment while you talk. So we can give that effect inside, and obviously, if we have, have these beautiful virtual eyes that we added, um, that's going to make a big difference. So besides that, I also want to select the eyelids, so that when I click on my mouse, he'll blink. Okay, and I can move and I can blink. If I don't do that, then obviously my my animation looks a bit, you know, a bit robotic, a bit very mechanical without any uh, blinking. 
So also make sure that this time scrub is all the way to the beginning. We do that by pressing stop. Do that every time. So blend date on next recording is on and let's record. There comes a point in a man's life and maybe that time for you is now when it doesn't hurt to start thinking about the future. It's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. It's a problem of motivation, all right? Yeah, I just stare at my desk. But it looks like I'm working. Perfect. That was great. Okay, so I'm going to clear selection again. And I think the last thing I want to give him is some head orientation. I want to make his head move a bit and, you know, nod when he says something. So we can play around with this. Let's, head, let's see head tilting. Oh, that looks okay. But I kind of like the other one better. Now, uh, you, you need to make sure that you're not jerking your, your mouse too much. Remember, this is a photorealistic character, so they make subtle movements, okay? So, blend date on next recording is on. My mouse, my time scrub is all the way to the beginning. And let's record. There comes a point in a man's life, and maybe that time for you is now, when it doesn't hurt to start thinking about the future. It's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. It's a problem of motivation, all right? Yeah, I just stare at my desk. But it looks like I'm working. And stop. Okay, great. So let me go back. There comes a point in this back. life, and maybe that time for you is now, when it doesn't hurt to start thinking about the future. It's not that I'm lazy. Okay, this it's part here, when he says I'm not lazy, I think I moved my mouse too much. So I can actually undo that part. So remember, the first layer we did, the basic, uh, the, the first animation was the inner eyebrows. Then we layered the smile on top of that. Then we layered the eyes and the eyebrows on top of that. And then the last one we did was the head movement. So if I go up here to undo or control Z, and I click on that, I will get rid of that last layer, which is the head movement. And I can play this back, and you can see there comes a point in man's that there's life, no head movement. Maybe that time for you is so let's stop that. And yes, we have it selected. And let's try that. Let's do it again. Blend date on next, and record. There comes a point in a man's life, and maybe that time for you is now, when it doesn't hurt to start thinking about the future. It's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. It's a problem of motivation, all right? Yeah, I just stare at my desk. But it looks like I'm working. And smile. Stop. There you go. Perfect. So I think we're done with our animation right there. There comes a point in a man's life, and maybe that time for you is now, when it doesn't hurt to start thinking about the future. It's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. It's a problem of motivation, all right? Yeah. I just stare at my desk, but it looks like I'm working. Okay, great. So the last part I'd like to show you uh, is basically the difference again between an image-based character and a sprite-based character. So when we have an image-based character like this, Crazy Talk will basically uh, morph and stretch the pixels. Okay, so if we open uh, the timeline we see that we have the voice clip and we have the va the facial clip okay so the facial clip is where we were dropping in all the emotions and you know the the, the personality and the mood to your character and the voice clip is where we were um, we were using to do all the lip syncs now when we use an image based character then crazy talk is able to um, animate the lips while at the same time give it a sad expression or a happy um, emotion through the facial clip. Why? Because it's stretching and morphing the pixels at the same time. So you're able to blend both the lip syncing and the, the mood that you're giving to this character. Okay? So you can do this with an image based character. But when you're working with a sprite based character like Walter here, then you're not able to do that. So let me go inside. Um, hold up, hold up characters. Where are my characters? I'll template. I'll go to characters all the way down and let's replace Peter with the original Walter again. Okay, so this is the thing. This is what I would like to explain that because Crazy Talk works with 
um, with sprites. This this character works with sprites. You only you have a collection of sprites for the mouth. Remember, okay. These are all the sprites that we have inside for this character. Now, if you drop in, for example, a sad expression while while he's talking, then obviously the lip sync is the one that will have priority. So in, in when you have a sprite based character again, you have the lip syncs, okay? So these lip syncs inside have priority over the motion clip that you that you created. So for example, if in the motion clip you were trying to make your character your character's mouth look sad and droopy, but the lip syncs are working and he's uh, doing all the phonemes then the top part the phonemes are what's go are we're going to have priority they have hierarchy over the emotions that you're trying to give to your character so in an image based character like peter you could morph and th the software would actually blend that uh sad mood with those lip syncs at the same time while you're animating but with a sprite based character you're unable to do that why because you have a set number of sprites and these sprites are being used for the lip sync so the best thing for us the best thing to do is basically to set a mood at the very beginning so let me move this forward just to to have a little space here at the beginning um what i recommend is this you want to, if you want to set a tone for your character, you want your character to feel sad, then in the beginning, you might want to take a second or half a second inside the facial clip to make your character look sad or may look happy or whatever mood you want to give them. This sets the tone for the animation. Then you're going to start, once you set that tone, you do that first mood here, then of course the lip syncs will start and your other... Um, facial clips will start and then at the end you want to set the tone again so you want your mood then you want the lip syncs to run and then you want to set the mood again and this is going to be best for sprite based characters okay so what would I do I would basically ha I have that space at the beginning so I'll go to sad let's see oh remember since this guy is not a face fitting character a photo fit, fitted character then you don't necessarily have to use any of these profiles you can use anything else so let's go into youthful or let's try wicked let's see what this looks like sad let me get rid of the head movement so he looks sad okay so we can try to give him that record that and then as soon as the lip sync start we just let go and then at the end we try to set that tone in again so let's try that so blend data on next recording is on um, if I open the timeline you see that we have one two too much time so let's move this forward okay so if I play this one yeah it's about one second I have time to fill in uh, to, to set the mood there okay so stop yeah we're good next recording and let's try this. So immediately, I'm going to set the tone, make him look sad. There comes a point in a man's life, and maybe that time for you is now, when it doesn't hurt to start thinking about the future. It's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. It's a problem of motivation, all right? Yeah, I just stare at my desk. But it looks like I'm working. And sad again. Okay. So I should have let this run forward a bit but you get the idea so now we have that complete motion clip where we set the tone he was sad then we let the facial clip run and then at the very end we made him look sad again okay so that's a little tip when working with sprite based characters okay people so that's it we hope you like this tutorial and we hope you can use this in your future animations thank you again